Um, so yeah, it's a really good show, and so we got picked up to for a summer series, and um, we did really well for a show that was not promoted at all, mm -hmm. had no budget. I mean, no one knew about it, but like we we got decent numbers, and we we thought we were going to get a second season, but it didn't work out. But yeah. it was a great experience, man. It was really uh, being in Portland was really cool. We playing the character of Atticus. Which I don't get to play much was very very cool as well. Really enjoyed that. Right. Yeah, it uh, was quite eccentric and quite yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good fun. So now you're going to be in an episode of The Rookie, which is probably going to be airing pretty soon, right? It's the fourth episode. Yeah. What was that like? Oh, it was good fun. It was good fun. Um, it was nice to play um, a character which I kind of haven't played before. I mean, mm -hmm. I have. He's a bit similar to the character I play in Dead, but more of a badass. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a lot of fun, you know, running around LA, and um, uh, I didn't get to work with Nathan, but I know Nathan, uh, he's a super cool guy, very nice guy, and um, yeah, it was good fun, I'm looking forward to seeing how it came out, actually a director of uh, Toa Fraser, who's a super talented director who did an episode of Daredevil. Um, direct to that episode, so it was nice to connect cool. back with him. Yeah. Now, speaking of Daredevil, yeah. let's talk about uh, you becoming a series regular for the third season. That's pretty cool. Oh, it's amazing. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's still pretty surreal to mm -hmm. be honest with you. And like um, now that we're so close to the show coming out, it's it's even more surreal. And seeing like the posters and the trailer coming out and stuff like that, it's. Um, it's, you're starting to. I mean, I always knew it was going to be. It was going to be a big deal for me for my mm -hmm. career, but um, seeing how much of a big deal it is for the public is pretty special as well. I mean, like uh, to come on to a show which is already so well established mm -hmm. and has such a huge fan base, and working for Marvel and working for Netflix. Um, yeah, this is that's huge. What can you tell us about your character, Ray? Ray Nadim is a, a, an honest FBI agent mm -hmm. who um, loves and adores his family. Uh, and he's ambitious, and um, basically finds himself in like financial hardship because of uh, his sister-in-law has cancer and she keeps getting denied health insurance. And so he's uh, been paying for her medical care, um, which has meant that his credit rating is really bad. <coughs> Now, when you have bad credit at the FBI, you become uh, you get overlooked for promotions because mm -hmm. you become high risk. Um, you can become a target for criminal organisations. So he's been overlooked for um, promotions, and he's 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 sinking. You know, he, his career's not going anywhere. He's really struggling to provide for his family. Um, he's becoming quite desperate, and he becomes Wilson Fisk's handler. That was my next question. You led right into it. We, oh, yeah. We work, yeah, we'd be working with that character. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I will be working a lot with um, the amazingly talented Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you work uh, a lot with Wilson Bethel, too, because he's playing FBI? Yeah, agent? yeah, yeah. I was very fortunate, actually, because, you know, like, Eldon Henson who plays Foggy, mm -hmm. and Vincent D'Onofrio have never done a scene together. You know, and they're three seasons in. And I think um, Deb gets her first scene with Vince in this season and like I'm very fortunate that I actually interact with all the characters that's cool so yeah it's very very cool so you know just <clears throat> being able to work with Vincent you know straight off the bat which was super intimidating actually first day I met him we were in a tiny little prison cell and he's a giant man and when he's in fisk mode he's super intimidating and that was my first day. That's a, yeah. Yeah, I got the. I'd flown out to New York, screen tested, got the role. Did some fittings and FBI training. Flew back to LA, picked up my stuff, moved back to New York, and started shooting all within six days. Okay. So I was still in like a weird headspace, like not really realizing what the hell was going on. Next thing, I'm standing next to Vincent D'Onofrio's Wilson Fisk. Did you, uh, the fact that you're a father and have obviously have a family, uh, help you get into the intensity of the role? Yeah, I mean, like, um, <clears throat> obviously, you know, as a parent, you know, the thing you want to do in life is make sure that your family's secure and, you know, you can provide for your kids. Mm -hmm. and, like, I totally empathize with Ray Nadine's predicament when he was struggling. And he's struggling because he's doing all the right things. Like, he hasn't done anything wrong. I mean, like, it's the corporations who are like stopping his 
his sister-in-law from getting health insurance. I mean, he'd done everything. He's a, I mean, he's a federal agent. Right. You know, and he's just tried to do the right thing. He's getting screwed over. He's constantly getting screwed over. Um, so that's like, the family side of it was quite easy for me to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but Eric Olsen, who's our amazing showrunner and who wrote uh, the first episodes and came up with these characters, he'd have flushed out these characters so well and the writing was so good that he made the FBI part for me very easy as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, a lot of credit goes to him, man. He, he for all of us, this, this season very character driven and um, he really flushed everything out and did an amazing job. Yeah. Charlie Cox gets to do a lot of stunts. Did you uh, have the opportunity to do any? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I've never really done stunts on this scale before. Um, and I did, yeah, I was very fortunate to do quite a bit of action in this. And uh, amazing, amazing stuff. I mean, I can't give it away, but mm-hmm. like... <laughs> You're gonna to have to watch it, but it's like really good. Absolutely I mean, the action sequences in this are unbelievable. Like the stunt team are out of this world, and you know Charlie, Charlie does a lot of his own stuff as well. Um, and um, yeah, the scenes. If you love the action scenes from season one and two, these ones are gonna blow you away. Awesome. Yeah. So, who were some of your acting inspirations when you were starting out? Um, or now that you're already established. <clears throat> No, I mean, there's so many, man. That's the thing. There's so many good people, good actors. I mean, the caliber is so high. Um, <clears throat> obviously, when I was younger, like, I wanted to be, like, Indiana Jones, and I wanted to be um, Rocky. You know, like, all, all those... I loved the action movies mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and then growing up now, you know, like, Christian Bale and Whacking Phoenix and Jay Gyllenhaal, just phenomenal, phenomenal actors. I love, I love them, um, and um, just uh, I really admire Riz Ahmed at the moment, like mm-hmm. what he's doing and how he's trailblazing <clears throat> the path for ethnic actors. That's one of the reasons why I love this role so much. I mean, you don't normally get to see a person of my ethnicity playing a role like this, mm-hmm. and they don't talk about religion culture and stuff right. like that he's just an just American just a character yeah he's an Amer- he is an American guy who all he wants to do is provide for his family and to see someone of my ethnicity do it I remember once we were shooting um, <coughs> we are shooting somewhere shooting a scene and a couple of the background guys came up to me and they were from I think India or Bangladesh and they came up to me and they were like so you're in this and I was like yeah and they were like wait you were like one of the main characters and I was like yeah and you could just see them light up. Mm-hmm. And they were like, wow, that's amazing. Wait, you could go bad guy. And I was like, oh, good guy. You know? And they were like, that's amazing, man. Like, you're representing for us. Like, And that's when I realized like, this role is, is really important to a lot of people because what I grew up not seeing people of my ethnicity play those roles that you wanted to play, mm-hmm. like, you know? And so for them to see someone in a Marvel Netflix show playing a good guy, doing all these action sequences and not talking, and he's not a terrorist or a shopkeeper or a taxi driver, one of his shitty bullshit roles, you know, mm-hmm. like, um, it's, it made, it kind of felt like you've given us hope that we can play these roles. Um, and it meant a lot to me. It really did at that point that, like, you know, it's very important to make good choices in what you do. And... Um, this was, you know, I think, so again, like, I can't thank Eric Olsen enough. Like, he fought for this character to be, you know, ethnic. Um, and hopefully it works out and it does well and it can inspire other people to go out and say, you can play a good guy. You can be the hero. Mm-hmm. You can play, you know, this is what, what American looks like, even though I'm British. But this is, I'm what British looks like. Right. You know, and why can't an American look like that? Why can't an American federal agent be Indian? Right. You know, or Pakistani or whatever it is, you know? Like, and I think that's what, hopefully this will make other people who make TV shows go, yeah, we can do that. And it's cool and it works. So how do you unwind when you're, when you're not shooting? I know you have a family. Yeah, I mean, like, when I'm, 
in LA, I mean, it's pretty busy with uh, work and stuff, but I I check out every couple of months and I just go and be with my kid mm -hmm. back in London and I just hang out there. After we shot Daredevil, I went back for like eight weeks and just be a dad. Just go and hang out and be a dad and drop him off at school, pick him up from school, give him dinner, play, in, play soccer in the park with him and... Uh, um, yeah, he's he's awesome. He's he he's a great um, grounder because whatever you do, he doesn't care. Right. Um, and he's like, oh, that's cool, Dad, but watch me score this goal. You know, it's just like <laughs> right, it's right. cool. It doesn't matter. And um, when you've had a like a shitty day, there's nothing better than like speaking to him. And he's like, hey, do you want to watch me play my toys? And it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I do. I really want to do that. Uh, my family are great support. Um, they're awesome. Uh, my sisters here. Um, Supporting me and enjoying this experience, and I, I think it's it's really nice for them to experience this because they saw me struggle. I mean, I was homeless for five years mm -hmm. in LA because you know I didn't have anywhere to stay. I mean, I was very lucky that I always found a roof every night, but you know I lived out of a suitcase for five years. I, I used to buy like a Subway sandwich in the morning, and I used to uh, that was my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I got a bus everywhere, and I uh, and I didn't have an iPhone. I had one of those drug dealer flip phones. <laughs> so like, I didn't know when the bus was coming. Right. You know, I'd be at bus stops for hours. I'd set off for auditions like three hours before, you know, I needed to be there and stuff. And it was hard. But like, so, something would happen every year. I'd get close to something where it's just, something would say, just stick this out. So, yeah. Stick this out. And that's, that's the main thing. That I've seen amazingly talented actors come and go because they just can't stick it out. They can't live that shitty lifestyle and it is it's tough it really is tough especially like i just became a dad um and i but something would happen every year was just like just stick this out mm -hmm. you'll be all right and um everything's becoming all right awesome yeah. uh what message do you want to send out to the daredevil fans october 19th uh get ready you're gonna really really enjoy it it's a uh, it's an amazing season. It really, really is. You're going to find out a lot more about the characters, their backstories. Mm -hmm. We get introduced to a new character, which I think is going to blow everyone away. Uh, the action sequences are... I cannot tell you enough how amazing these, these action sequences are. Um, there's a homage to the famous uh, scene in season one, the mm -hmm. way fight scene. That's really cool. I'm really uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, good. You'll, you'll enjoy it. Uh, believe me, it's going to be amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time yeah, out from your busy schedule to interview with me. It's yeah, been a man, pleasure. No worries. Thank you so much.